Hello and welcome to my retro watches. I've got a short review for you on the watch that you can see in front of you now. It's called the Omnium. Strange name. It's a sub brand apparently of a brand called Proxima. Uh, these guys are on AliExpress of all places. Um, now they kindly sent me this watch all the way back uh, in August just as I was having my operation and they've been very patient with me to make this review. Uh, so I hope you're going to enjoy this one. It's an interesting looking watch. We're going to go into a lot of detail. Uh, so if you want to see this one close up, then stay tuned and keep watching. Now then, I'm going into this completely blind. I don't know anything about this watch brand. Uh, I have looked at the offerings that they've got in their shop. Some of them are homage. Some of them look uh, their own design. Um, this one, I'm not sure if it's homaging anything at all. It's certainly very interesting. I've never seen a watch close up with the translucent dial like this before. I know it's been done many times. There's a, a Seiko from quite a few years ago that I remember seeing a bit like this. And some of the more modern Seikos of today have also got this translucent type dial. Uh, I can't get used to the name Omnium. It sounds almost like one of the uh, bike races, the indoor track racing. I forgot what that's called, Omnium or something like that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there we go, we're gonna have to get past the name. Let's get close up to that dial and have a better look at what this watch is all about. Here we are then, nice and close up. I'm gonna be really interested to read your comments a bit later on below as to what you think of the translucent dial. For me, I find it really nice actually. I like skeletonized watches. I Because I work on so many watches, I like to see the inner workings and I can still see them here. And now the movement in this one is a PT5000, which is the ETA clone of the 2824. Uh, I like this movement. It looks very nice. So to actually now see it on the dial side is pretty cool. I do also like the way that you can see the calendar ring uh, all the way around. Great feature, maybe not to everybody's taste, but it is certainly to mine. Anybody that likes seeing mechanics, I think will like a watch like this. Starting off in the center then, We've got a nice set of Dauphine hands there, brush on the top, uh, polish on the facets on the side, and that second hand is capped as well in the center, which is brilliant. You don't always see that, tipped in red, of course. And then you can see that quite a nice chapter ring. I really do like that chapter ring. It's very legible, it's very big. You've got those um, red accents, every other index. Smashing, can't fault that at all. Looks really nice. The indices are nicely beveled on the sides. They're also beveled on the fronts on the double at 12 and also on six. High polished, filled with loom. Again, can't fault that really, it's quite nice. Uh, the date window there at three is a printed surround, but it does the job well. I think, you know, it's all about that blue dial and being able to see behind it. Uh, okay, get past the name, especially when the M looks like, uh, well, I don't know what it looks like, let's face it. Uh, and then Phantom Automatic. Well, it's not a Phantom Automatic because it's an actual real automatic. So I'm making light of that really because I'm sure the watch must be called a Phantom. Here's the loom shot. It's BGW9. Uh, so it's that sort of bluey tinge to it. This was a time lapse over 15 minutes. It did fade to absolute nothing. Uh, that is in part my camera just couldn't pick it up enough. It was still legible after that time, uh, but it's not the best loom I've seen. Far from the worst, but um, it does its job uh, no more than that. Before I look at the case in any more detail, better give you the dimensions of this watch. So, case diameter, it's 42 millimeters. A little bit too big for me. This watch would have been ideal. Again, 39, 40 a push. 42 is just that little bit too big for me. Uh, it's 13 millimeters thick and it is 49 millimeters lug to lug. So it does wear quite big on the wrist and that to me is its Achilles heel. Uh, here is a wrist shot now, hopefully you'll see what I mean. I've got seven inch wrists, it's about 18 centimeters. And here we go. I think the dial again still looks great, but it's that lug to lug. That's what really makes it look a bit too big. It fits my entire width of my wrist. And now it's my critique on the case finishing. And you can see it, can't you? It's very, very shiny, very reflective. 
and uh, the polishing has been done to a high standard don't get me wrong i just think it's been polished in the wrong places i think that case top should have been brushed uh, certainly around the lugs because that would have fitted nicely with the bracelet uh, you could get away with the high polishing around the outer edge of the bezel because the top part of the bezel has got linear uh, brushing on it um, yeah it's done well just done in the wrong order in my opinion at least what do you think do you agree with me do you disagree with me on the sides again it's high polished on the sides but the little side chamfer if you like that has been brushed so again it's kind of the polar opposite of what i would deem making this watch stand out and look a lot better i really like the bracelet though it's solid stainless steel it's got lovely fine brushing on the top and those smaller links are highly polished gives it a nice contrast it has got split pins though for its uh, adjustments i'm used to seeing screws nowadays split pins are a bit of a pain in the backside but of course they still work down to the clasp then it's a milled clasp there's five micro adjustments uh, you've got double pusher quick release and the shell at the top highly brushed uh, polished sides and it's made really thick it's got a nice big thick piece of steel could have done with a logo i think on it um, but yeah good effort all the same turn it over and here is the case back and i'm not entirely struck on it to be honest with you i like the writing on the outside for once we've got a watch it's actually telling us what it is uh, but the iceberg with the polar bear and a penguin underneath i don't understand what relevance that has got to either phantom or anything and it's hiding that display case back which is showing off that absolutely gorgeous PT 5000 movement uh, let's have a look at it with the case back off I love gold movements and this one is a feast for my eyes some people give the PT 5000 a lot of critic because it's Chinese I guess and it's replicating an ETA and they're supposed to have some problems I haven't encountered any of that so far these are a high beat or a semi high beat it's eight uh, sorry 28,800 uh, vibrations per hour it looks fantastic the finishing's great on it one day i trust me guys as soon as i can get a hold of a eta 2824 i'm doing a comparison video um, what i also like about this is that sort of i forgot the name of it but the milling in the back of the case there that gives it that nice pattern you wouldn't see that. I mean, that's covered up by the case back anyway. I guess you can still see that finishing through the case back there, but the words do slightly obscure it. But it's got to be said, it's good to see it. I didn't expect to see that level of finish on a watch like this. So well done, Proxima. Here we are on the bench then, and let's test it. Lift angles, 50 degrees. Let's see what we're going to get. And that's a nice straight line. Look at that. Plus two seconds a day. On dial up okay just try and leave it a little bit longer to run but that is definitely impressive zero beat error this is what i keep seeing with these pt 5000s so when people criticize them for not being reliable they're certainly set up well better just put it back in trying to get it in with the uh, crown down Okay, we get a little bit of uh, beat error, always expected at these sort of acute angles, but still the rate is impressive. And crown up, let's see what crown up's going to do. Now, of course, you should always leave this for much longer than I'm doing it in each position if you want to get a true reflective reading, because they do need to settle down. But we're not seeing much again. The rate's gone up to plus eight seconds. The beta has closed up a little more. Uh, I think the rate might come down, give it a little bit of time, um, but it's still very impressive. Oh, it's actually gone up to 10 seconds, but we're talking about 10 seconds a day here. Fantastic. Okay, let's get dial down. Dial down should always be a good reading. And it's not really letting us down at all is it there's a little bit of static in the background but don't worry about that we're back down to the two seconds a day a very marginal b terror that again i'm sure if you left this running for half an hour and came back that would be showing zero before i give you my final thoughts gotta talk about the cost of course 
So this one comes in loads of different varieties. There's the blue one and there's a brown coloured one. Don't really do much for me, the brown one. You can buy it on a strap and that's going to be £198, which is around about $242 US. Uh, if you have it with the bracelet, uh, then it's £223 and that's around about $273. You can also have it with the Swiss made Salita SW200 movement and then that's going to boost the price right up. I think it's 300 20 odd pounds for that for the vanity of having the swiss movement proxima now also offer this in a, a pt sorry uh, in a nh35 a seiko nh35 movement that's a lot cheaper it's 190 pounds would i have an nh35 movement in it no it doesn't look nice enough to have a display case back and then a sort of display uh, dial as well it's less of an interesting movement. Okay, you save some money. Perhaps the Seiko is also more reliable, um, but aesthetically, no, doesn't do it for me at all. And what's ironic as well is that on their AliExpress listing for the NH35, all of their imagery is of the PT5000. So you don't even get a chance to look at what it's going to look like with an H35 movement, which is an absolute cardinal sin. If you try to sell it, then you need to show us the pictures of the right watch that you're gonna receive. So that is a very much a negative for me, and I hope they're watching, and I hope they change their images as a result. So my final thoughts, what do I think about this watch? Well, there's a few things to like about it. Certainly, I like that blue color. I like the translucent dial. To see inside the watch is pretty cool. Um, not many other people, I think, are doing it like this. So 10 out of 10 for effort there. I like the hands. I like the indices. Love the chapter ring. Uh, like the bracelet. Don't like the case finishing, of course. I think that's really bad, being too highly polished. You're just going to have fingerprints and marks all over it and lots of odd reflections. Um, I don't like that case back design. I think they should just do away with that, have a have a display case back and only a PT5 5000 movement so we can all enjoy what it looks like. That would also be a lot better. Um, to supply it on the strap that they do, I don't think does much for this watch at all. It is a bracelet watch for 100%. Um, and the NH35 movement listing, well, that's very, very much a negative. Would I buy one? You know, I'm not sure. I think it's just too big. Uh, had it been 39 millimeters, uh, possibly, you know, just for that unique sort of dial layout, uh, I could sacrifice some money for it. It is on the high end of the price range, I think, for a watch like this, but then that's just my personal opinion. So there we go. That is the end of the review. There are links below. They are affiliate links. So if you want to check out Proxima or um, Omnium, uh, then have a look at those see if there's anything you want to buy if you do of course i earn a small commission from those links just for transparency um and lastly hope you've enjoyed the video leave comments i read every one i try to reply to as many as i can if you've enjoyed this type of review please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing uh, more watch repair is coming less reviews is coming on the channel for my regulars because of course i've got another channel for reviews now i just have some still to do that i was bound to do before i started the new channel so you have to bear with me on that one um so yeah there we go i will catch you very very soon in the next video i look forward to it bye for now